I was 19 or 20 years old, uh, maybe 21. My best friend got killed in a car accident. And so I started thinking a lot about what was important in life. At the same time, the Intifada started. And I started seeing pictures in the newspaper of, uh, of guys my age who were going into battle. This whole Israel idea, something I hadn't really thought that much about before. And I started feeling like it was really important to me that, that I was connected to my people. I came to Israel with the idea of joining the army. I knew I wanted to go into a special unit, special forces of the paratroopers, that, is, that focuses on the Gaza area. Gaza is a very, very dangerous place to, to operate. There's a lot of people who are very, very violent and would want nothing more than to see a lot of dead Jews. We all knew that we're going into a place that the enemy wants us to come into. We knew that they had booby traps set for us. We knew that they were waiting for us with anti-tank rockets. Gaza is not a place you want to go. Hundreds of soldiers all around us and we're all getting ready to go inside and tanks driving by and, uh, and chaos. 15 minutes, be ready to move out. Have your gear on you, paint your face, everything, you're ready to go. There's this line of soldiers, like as far as you can see, walking toward the border of Gaza. We get up to a certain point and there's some, uh, some soldiers standing on either side of the road and they're asking each person who goes by, do you have your dog tags? I'm like, no, I don't have my dog tags. They write my name down, Ariel Siegelman equals number 6624. Put one in your boot, put one in your other boot, put one around your neck. Because you know what dog tags are for. I gotta have one in one boot, one in the other boot, and one around my neck, because if they find pieces of my body somewhere and they don't know whose body it is, so now hopefully they'll be able to tell. Oh, that's number 6624. Then we get to a point right at the fence where they stop us and stand us in a big semicircle, in a chet. Many, many men deep. Huge semicircle because hundreds of soldiers, all of us with our faces painted. We're all standing there with all of our equipment on, all of our gear. Everybody's brain is buzzing, like trying to figure out what the heck's going on. So they hand us this little card, this laminated card, that says, Tfila lifnei yitziyalekrav. The prayer for going out to battle. And there's this rabbi standing there in front of all of us, and he yells at the top of his lungs. And he says the psukim, right? Like the statements in the Torah that the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, says to the nation before the nation goes off to battle. He says, you are the army of Israel, and you're going to war, but you will not be afraid, because God is going out to war with you. God is going to fight your battle for you. I think I speak for uh, for the other guys who were there. All that buzzing, all that like confusion that was going on, it was just like, focus. We went into Gaza, and God went into Gaza with us. It was like walking into hell. The world is full of, of explosions. The world is full of smoke. I mean, it's, it was war. Here we are, beautiful morning, beautiful downtown Gaza. I would not have been surprised if there were dozens of, uh, of dead men. And I see a whole bunch of armored personnel carriers and tanks with their hatches open. And I think like, man, how many guys got it? And as I'm going by, I'm kind of glancing inside to look and look for the blood. So I see my officer and I ask him, uh, how many of us got hurt? How many people got killed? He said, uh, he said, well, nobody. Nobody got killed. And I'm like, what? In all of that shooting and all of those explosions and all of that stuff that was going on around us, nobody got killed. One guy got injured, 
a chunk of concrete comes flying out of the house and, and hits this guy, tears the arm of his uniform, and when I saw the medic taking care of him, he was using a baby wipe. That was the injury in our unit in the Gaza War. When we walked out of Gaza, as the sun peeked up over the horizon, there was this huge double rainbow in the sky with military vehicles, tanks driving by, and there's this euphoric feeling of knowing that, you know, okay, so far, man, I survived. And for a moment, for, for a couple of minutes, everybody stopped. And all these guys are like looking at the sky. I'm telling you, people felt it. The whole time we were in there, we felt it like, what is going on? How come the bullets aren't hitting us? How come the explosions aren't getting us? How come the trip wires, we see them? Everyone, how come we find everything? It doesn't seem right, something's not right here. This rainbow went across the sky, these guys were stopping. They reached their hands to the sky and they're like cheering. I hear guys saying, like, he's with us. Hashem Itano. We went into Gaza, and God went into Gaza with us.